Welcome amazing people. We are going to start a new lesson today. Today we are going to be talking about neurographic art. Neurographic art is um, the idea of meditating and discovering things while you're creating art. It is not something that we're going to rush through. It's going to be done slowly and calmly. It's a form of meditation and there's a lot of different beautiful things that you can be doing with it. So let me show you what a piece of neurographic art looks like that I have completed for this assignment. All right, here we go. Here is a piece of neurographic art that I have created so that you can see what's going on. Um, I did it with Sharpie and watercolor. Those are the only two things that we used for this. It's got lots of curves to it. It's got some bright colors and I finish it off by adding a little bit of Zentangle doodles to it to add a little bit of spice because I like having thing inter things interesting. Remember, the idea for this project is not to rush. It's not about going fast. It's about taking your time, slowing down, breathing, and focusing on one line at a time. To do this, you are going to need your permanent marker, the bigger tipped one, and your ultra fine Sharpie, okay? You are also going to need your watercolors, but we're gonna save that for a little bit and we're just gonna start off with the beginning part, how to get our design down. Now, if we remember from all of our things before, a line is a dot that moves through space, right? So we are going to take our line and go for a walk. It's not a run. Remember what I said, not a run. It's gonna be slow and calm with deliberate movements, okay? The one thing that you need to remember is you can have zero sharp edges. So no zigzags, it all needs to be curves. So what I'm gonna do here, so I'm gonna take my line and just kind of start. I don't have to be very fast. I'm gonna see where it goes and see it where it makes me happy. See what happens when I do it. Kind of going slow, feeling the movement. As I go around the piece. Okay, I like my little ziggles angles there. So there's one line. So I focused on just that line. So now I'm going to focus on my next line. And it's just going to kind of wander. Again, I'm not really being thoughtful about where my line goes. I'm just kind of letting it be. I want it to do what it wants to do. That's pretty nice. I got some nice lines going on there. I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a little semicircle, half circle. I like that line in there. And I think I'll do another one over here. Yeah, we'll go right here. And then just to average, uh, even us out a little bit, I'm gonna do another one right here because I like how it's been looking. All right, so there is my piece. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Note though, when I said there had to be no sharp edges, every place that a line crossed, you have a sharp edge. So I'm going to now show you how to get rid of those sharp edges. I have this piece here that I did that's a little bit simpler and you can see exactly what I'm doing. So this is where I take my ultra fine Sharpie and I'm going to round out my edges by doing a U shape. The bottom of the U goes towards the point. So any which way it goes towards the point, right? And I wanna smooth this out too also so that it's nice and smooth. And then I'm going to fill that in, color it all the way in. Note, I'm not rushing. I'm taking my time, making it nice, making it look good. You're gonna probably have some areas like this where you're going, oh gee, what do I do? What I do is I draw the circle inside of my triangles 
and then I color in my triangles here because I like how that looks. I'm going to do it here, get my nice big rounded shape, and then also here. So I have it all rounded, and I'm kind of round like this. And then I can go back and round these out. See, I have my U shape always going towards the point of the triangle, right? And then I take my time and I color them in. This is what you're going to do for your whole piece. If you have an area that you've left that has a point like this, you need to go back in and make sure that you round it out rounding it out giving it that nice curve no sharp edges anywhere it's about being soft and relaxing taking your time creating something beautiful so this is just an example i had with some bigger lines let me show you i'll finish coloring up this here real quick and show you and i'll show you how i start doing it on mine all right so here we go with this. I personally like to work very ordered in my things. You don't have to. So I like to start up here in my corner and start filling in my lines. And I'm going to go all U shapes. Remember, my U goes towards the triangle. And I want it to be nice and evened out. And then I just color it in where I want it to make sure that I don't have that those sharp edges anymore. See, I'm doing another circle here getting those to be nice and smooth and rounded. And you're gonna take your time and just keep doing this for a little bit. All right, we're gonna speed up while I'm doing this so you can see it the whole process. So it'll take me a little bit to get this done. As you can see, this is how I'm working. What we'll do here is we'll pause the video and I'll show you when it's all completed. All right, I look forward to seeing you in just a couple moments through the magic of pausing. Okay, so we're back. So I have everything all done. I have no sharp points. I have everything curved off. This one's a little bit sharp, but we're gonna round it off right there. And I have a lot of really beautiful things going on here. Uh, one of the things I'm not usually fond of is having a lot of large space because I have to fill it up with uh, watercolor or pattern. So because I'm not too keen on some of this, I'm going to do a quick line. Going like this. And I think that'll actually divvy up the last of my large spaces. It wasn't a very big line, but that's okay. Uh, I didn't need it to be a big line, and I'm just going to finish off rounding these things here real quick so that I can show you the next step. Uh, the next step, what you're going to want to do is make sure that you have your watercolors, because having your watercolors is going to be what is uh, we're using the paint with. Uh, that's why we use the Sharpies, because they're waterproof. If you were to do this with something else in watercolors, you would wind up making a really um, big mess because uh, Sharpie uh, other pens a lot of times are not waterproof and you don't want your lines to bleed as you're applying your beautiful color. Now let's give a couple of rules for how we're going to go about using our watercolor. Think about uh, colors that look good together, right? We want things so that it's not garish and bright. I also want you to know that you need to have at least two colors that are mixed. You're going mixed? Well, let's look here at our chart. When we look at our chart here, we can actually see things that are mixed. So that means we have the pure colors going straight down here and everything else is mixed. So that means if I like this uh, red and green together, I'm gonna use it and truth be told, I really do like that red and green together. 
I also like uh, the green and orange and then all my browns mixed with the uh, colors. So I think that's actually what I'm gonna do for this here lesson. I'm going to do, mix my colors and get them together. So it is now your chance to start painting. What I do is I take my colors that I want and I, of course, am getting my watercolor palette ready. Remember, as we do this, you just want a drop of water in the watercolor so it's there, okay? And then we're gonna go, I like the red and green together, so we need to get some more uh, water in the red and green. And then I also liked the orange and green, so I'm gonna mix those up. Okay, so I have my colors, uh, the ones I really liked, uh, green and brown, and I liked uh, the brown and orange, and I liked the green and brown, uh, green and uh, orange and green and red. Those were things that I thought were really nice. When I'm doing this here, what I wanna do is, uh, I have this area up here that I can use to mix colors. Uh, it can activate the color that I had before, which looks like it was kind of an orange. So I can actually bring some more of my orange up here, right? And uh, make sure that I have enough water so that I can get a nice color in here. And uh, let's see here, I think we'll, we'll start off with mixing the uh, green in with my orange up there. So I'm gonna take my green and mix it in up here. Gives me this nice kind of weird brown color. Obviously I'm kind of in a brown mood. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna start laying that color down in here. I just wanna be nice and even. Again, like I said before, this is not about who can finish the, uh, the assignment the fastest. Instead, it's about who can take their time and create some beautiful work. And make sure that you have something that you're proud of and is beautiful. So it's not a huge race. And get my color in there, making it look real nice and good. Pretty happy with that color. Uh, and, and I understand that you probably won't like my colors and that's okay. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick out another area in my piece that I feel needs to have those same colors. So that's what we're doing is we're picking out pieces that would look good in the same color and we're going to do everything that we've chosen in that same color all at once that way we don't have to try and mix colors again try and get them to be uh, something they're not and just kind of uh, working with what we have and painting some beautiful work um, as you can see I'm working pretty wet uh, that way I can move my colors around add to it if I need to so this is your next step. So as you're working here, paint in things. I'm gonna keep going, seeing what I come up with. Gotta add some more orange here to my place up here. And then uh, get some more green and mix up my color again. And see what we have here to make. Got a little bit more green in that one, that's okay. It's still nice. I like it, it'll look good in the end. So kind of got an olive tone. So now you're going to uh, continue painting, filling up all your colors. That's gonna be the next step. You will see a picture of my final piece of this here final piece in the assignment as an example. So you can see what I'm talking about. Otherwise, uh, I will see you later, and the next video we will cover, we'll talk about adding Zentangle to it. Thank you, everyone.